Welcome to Standing in the Sunlight with Cynthia Rose. We are all on an ever-unfolding unique journey. Join Cynthia Rose as she begins her unique perspective to all that is meaningful. Topics and personalities that support your path. Bringing inspiration and passion and heart-centered ways to live a more fulfilling life. A down-to-earth and uplifting sharing of what it means to be spiritual, creative, and living life to the fullest by standing in the sunlight. Born an intuitive medium, Cynthia Rose is also an ordained minister, singer, astrologer, educator, and writer. She has studied the intuitive and healing arts for over 40 years. Rise up and stand in your sunlight now with Cynthia Rose. everyone. I'm excited to bring another show for you today. This is going to be a really fun show. I'm going to have Randy Sue Sunshine from Sunshine Singing Telegrams here to share some of her funniest or most memorable telegrams. Of course, names and places changed. <laughs> uh, Randy has had a telegram business since 1980 in the Denver, Colorado area and serves Colorado with unique and different telegrams. They're personally made. Um, often they're, well, we're, you know, we're gonna, you're gonna hear about how personal made they are and what they're like. This is not just put on a suit and sing an Elvis song. This is really, these are really special. Brandy is also intuitive. She's also a pioneer in that she created her own business at a time when she was a young mom and she thought, what am I going to do? Uh, she went to CU Boulder here, Colorado University, studied theater and um, worked in a costuming department and loved acting, but wanted to wanted to make people's day and wanted to continue to do theater and also singing. So she created this company and Colorado has loved her ever since. So I'm really happy to invite Randy to the show. And she, we're here she is. Say hello, Randy. Hello. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're today, right? And telegrams for me, um, I, I've seen people go through um, a lot of emotion when a telegram comes. Like it, it means more than any gift they could have have, of could have been given. You know, they're just some of these are priceless. It's a way of one person person sharing their love with another person, and it really does brighten their day, which was what I had in mind. A lot of times, people are kind of shy, or they rarely express the their real heart. And so by putting together a telegram, they get to do that. Oh, is that why so many guys receive telegrams on Valentine's Day? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, I just thought I would jog your memory. Um, I know I have a memory. Um, can I share so something that um, I have done this for Randy and you sent me out on a telegram. And um, I think it might have been my first, I'm not sure, but it was one of the first few. And I was singing to a man um, and he had given his kidney to his girlfriend and saved her life. And I had to not cry because I was the one singing, but it was personal. And you said to me, it's all about the heart, bring the heart when you sing. And it, he, he was crying and he was a real tough macho guy and he was crying and I think he was three sheets to the wind too, but, but it was so meaningful. I mean, he was hugging me and sobbing and, and I thought, what a human being he, and it just happens to be his mate. So that was my most meaningful telegram that I want to say. So. But if one comes to mind, I'd love to jog your memory. Well, I think it's been a really interesting thing. I thought it was going to be a lot of happy birthday and happy anniversary. 
but I have had some very unusual occasions in addition to those. Um, one was thank you for the kidney. One was thank you um, for. <laughs> I actually here is the hat that you wanted to buy and we told you someone else did, but really we secretly bought it for you. That was a fun occasion. Another occasion was thank you for having four of my children and living with me for the past ten years. Let's get married. Aww. <laughs> so was it like a was like a proposal? Yes. Those are always a lot, a lot of fun. And then um, we sang to a Denver Bronco right before the Super Bowl. That was really exciting. I think we need to speak a little louder, too. Okay. How's this? I think it's about the same. Okay. There we go. All right. Eat that microphone. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, since we're not able to mention names, I'll just tell you that I once had an occasion to sing to a person who later became the president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> His wife was supposed to wake him up at a certain time and she forgot to and he was feeling very grumpy. So she called and ordered a telegram to say, I'm really sorry I didn't wake you up in time. Please don't be grumpy. I dressed up like a clock and <laughs> it was very exciting. I had to be interviewed by the Secret Service before I did this. You had to be interviewed by the Secret Service? Yes, they had to know what I looked like, sounded like, what I'd be wearing so that no imposters could take my place. And did they approve of your clock or did you have to modify anything? I did not have to modify <laughs> anything. <laughs> Wow, I don't think, I haven't heard that one. I thought that would be new for you. Yeah. And I didn't even know this person existed, but um, that it, it did happen that uh, later on I became president. Wow. Now, what about, um, oh, now my mind's going blank. If you have another one, I was gonna ask you, what about the telegram you did uh, for a doctor? Um, I think you put it on YouTube. Well, um, one thing that I did for a doctor is I was laid up in bed with a broken ankle. And um, I was on the mend by then, but I was still in a cast. And I got a call from an orthopedic surgeon's office. And they said they'd like to surprise the doctor. So... I said, I will send a decrepit person on crutches in a cast to sing to them. That was a lot of fun. Okay, but didn't you do one where you had to pretend? Like, wasn't it a, a, a prank? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm just like a, a homeless person and went to a doctor's office. And how did that go? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, the doctor was was completely convinced that I was a person with a lot of fears who had showed up at his office. <laughs> okay. And um, didn't you do one? Uh, well, do you have one you want to share with us? I can always ask you about another one if they come to mind. I just thought I'd mention that um, I had the occasion to sing to a person who was celebrating being cancer free for 10 years. And that was a really fun, fun event. And there was so much love and support around that person. It's really an honor to do this work because the people I'm singing to are usually really beautiful, fabulous people. And the people who are sending me to sing to them are usually really thoughtful, appreciative, special people. And I'm just the messenger. Wow, that, see, to me, that would just bring where spiritual lessons would tie in, doing a telegram like that. 
It really uses a lot of spiritual lessons to do this work. First of all, you have to really be in the moment. You have to think on your feet, react to the situation you're in. You have to put these together really quickly. And um, so you also have to have faith that it's all going to work out. You have to manifest the way to do something, the way to find the right person to sing the right tune. You have to listen to your inner voice. And that's how I put together the lyrics. What I do is as I'm talking to the person ordering, I, I just listen in. And you know what? A lot of times I hear a little playlist going. And if I pay attention and I write that down and I use the directions from Spirit, there's always a good reason. I love that. That's a, just an example of how we can use our intuition in our job. And, you know, and for you, this really is a calling. So I, I know it is. But I wanted to ask you is one of the things I know you still like to do telegrams, although you send people out as well. And I know that you love doing them. Is that why you love it being in the moment, the creation of being in the moment? I love it because it allows me to use all the best parts of myself, um, my writing abilities, my performing skills, my imagination and creativity, and participating in these wonderful moments in people's lives. Yeah, that's wonderful. Now, I, I just, I know we're digressing a little bit, but how... Um, when you started, there wasn't really any platform for this or anything to follow, was there? There was one company that was working in town, and they had sort of a different way of going about things. And I, oh, actually, there were two companies. There were two companies, um... One was pretty expensive, so I competed by charging a little bit less. And uh, the other one specialized in opera. And I, I ordered a telegram from them once. And um, when uh, I was placing the order, they said to me, you know, you ought to come to work for us sometime. So it turned out that I was in a very short-term marriage that didn't work out well. I had a baby to raise. And so I contacted them with the idea of working for them. Um, I thought it would add a lot to my audition to bring my sister. And she got stage fright and just giggled her head off. And they decided <laughs> that we were drunk, which we were not. <laughs> then the most funny thing about this is I would run into these people over the years and they would tell me oh we enjoyed your audition so much we still talk about it we still laugh about it and then one of the men who was part of this company married a woman who died and uh, I didn't know but uh, this friend of mine took me to the memorial for his wife I didn't know who the person was going to be and so we're at this memorial, and everyone's mourning the loss of this beautiful woman. And he saw me and started going, oh, my God, it's you, and then retelling the whole story and laughing. And it kind of made his day at the memorial. Anyway, I thought to myself, there really isn't anything that I can't do and any reason why I need to work for someone else. And I decided to open my own business. And I did this because I wanted to be really a full-time mother and have a way of making money. So telegram work, you can do pretty much 97% prep work you know, booking it, planning it, writing it, getting ready to do it. And then when you go sing to someone, it involves maybe, we'll say, half an hour travel. And then you're singing and entertaining for five or ten minutes. And that allowed me to be a, a full-time mother in my son's life. 
I was able to go to the programs at a school. I was able to pick him up and take him to school every day. And it made it very entertaining growing up for him because he would see Santa Claus in his living room, people practicing the hula, belly dancing, um, <laughs> any number of things. And by the time he was in high school, he would say, um, Mom, could you please drop me off a block away from school? <laughs> <laughs> His friends really enjoyed seeing me pick him up in my gorilla suit, but he didn't like it as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just think that's a great way to grow up. It's like, let's never forget to laugh, the power of laughter. Keep the child inside alive. I did find that um, I worked at a lot of kids' parties, and when I started treating the grown-ups the way I treated the kids, it was just as much fun for the grown-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I took um, my son to do a telegram with me one time, and uh, it was for the principal of an elementary school. And his job was to tell her she was the most beautiful woman in the world and do the tango with her and flirt with her. And she was such a nut that she moved his hand to her bottom. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he does not do telegrams anymore. <laughs> and I took him to a party where I read tarot cards and he was supposed to be a gorilla running around outside and scaring the little girls. But the little girls got the best of him because they ran to the window and when they saw him, they pulled up their little blouses and flashed their training bras at him. <laughs> boy, oh boy. I, I know that everyone I know that knows Randy loves to have her at parties because she's full of stories. And I can hear that the music is queuing up. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about telegrams and spiritual lessons from this great manifester and manifesting with Randy Sue Sunshine. See you in a moment. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at omtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What Is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, every Thursday, and together, we can discover what's really going on. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Okay, you have a telegram to do a switch. Okay, we're back. Um, you know, I, I thought I might share something again. Um, 
So you sent me out to do a telegram and you said, uh, this is a really important telegram, you know, build up all the love in your hearts, send with love. And I went, I'm in. Um, and I went to sing to a young man who was not supposed to live past the age of 12 or something. I don't know if you recall that, but I think he was 19. And um, do you recall that one? Was it at a rehabilitation center? No, it was a, it was actually, I think, at a house. And uh, anyways, what I remember about that was he couldn't talk and um, I think he was quadriplegic. So he was responding with sounds. And when I came to do that telegram, I just felt that soul so happy so thrilled in the moment with me like more in the moment i can say than some people that that were able to use all their limbs he was just right there with me he took every moment in he uh wanted hugs and uh the family said yes you know it's okay to hug him and they told me by his responses that he was thrilled and i, I thought he was i left there feeling like i was given a gift it really is a huge gift. Yeah. It it just, it was a spiritual lesson for me that whatever experience, I mean, I know this to be true, but I really felt like I had a being in front of me who was showing me that the meaning of his life, how powerful it was, the experience he was having, he was communicating that to me without words. Now, some of the listeners out here, they may work with uh, with individuals that have these uh, challenges, but I haven't worked with, you know, in a center like that. And I was just so moved by the experience I had singing for him. It, it just touched my heart so deeply. And I could tell that it touched his. It was beautiful. That's so nice. You've done a great job. <laughs> well, I always thought that I was in the business of surprising people, but I've found that this business also is a big surprise for me. Oh. <laughs> um, I met my brother-in-law before I met my current husband. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let's hear about that. Um, when I, when my husband took me to meet his family, his brother-in-law, he said, well, what did you think? Um, and his brother-in-law said, I met her already. She sang happy birthday day to me about a year ago. And I was like, really? <laughs> and so help me, my husband looked through all my calendars, found his brother's name on the calendar. And yes, I had sung to him. Wow. So that was a great surprise. Yeah, I, I have had a couple of things like that happen to me. It's not coming to me right now where people said, I know you, you sang to me, and I, I don't know them. I think, how could you recognize me with some of the outfits Randy puts on, I'll tell you. Um, this, Like I say, I think you dressed me up like a coffee cup once. Um, <laughs> and, um, and what's some of the, the different outfits that you've created? Because you build these yourself. They're not a stock thing. Well, I remember... One time I was singing as um, a jean. I put on a plastic uh, transparent membrane and I put different balloons that were different squiggles and round things for atoms and molecules. <laughs> and I sang to an epidemiologist. That was very fun. Wow. See, that's just creativity in action right there. I would never in a million years think of that. I would be just stumped. One thing you don't want is to have a problem with your car when you're dressed like a stork or <laughs> dressed like Minnie Mouse. It's not a good situation because you're trying <laughs> to ask for help and people are going, Mickey Mouse is waving at me, yay, and they honk and drive by. Oh, <laughs> did that happen to you? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, one time a lady pulled out in front of me and just, I was about to T-bone her. She wasn't signaling. She just suddenly jerked in front of me. So I did hit her car, but I managed to swerve enough not to injure her. But then we had to meet with all the insurance people with me in my stork 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> were they able to keep a straight face? <laughs> <laughs> they they uh, tried to pretend I was dressed normally. Isn't that funny when people do that? I mean, if you see someone in uh, the grocery store and they're wearing what looks like a ridiculous outfit, like, hello, have a smile, laugh at it. But you really get to see how people are present or completely wrapped up where they miss it or even uncomfortable because fun is not on their agenda that day, you know? And no criticism to, to we've all been there. But don't you feel that you really get to see how present people are by what you're wearing? One time I was in the store with my son. He was probably five years old and the checker said, wow, what's it like to have a mother who's a clown? And my son didn't hesitate for a second and he said, well, when she goes home and takes up, takes off all the makeup, she looks exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, that just makes me think about the, you know, one of the things from watching you over the years with your telegrams makes me think about um, the trust you've had for your, your inner guidance about creating the life that you want. Um, you put it out there, you do it with all your heart. And how did you, you know, what's your view on manifestation? You know, how did you come to that? Did you, did you just have it already? Did you build it? I mean, how did you come I, to that? I just believed I could do that. I could do that. And every so often, if I had a quiet moment, I would say, am I on the right path? And then I would always be answered immediately with a phone call saying, yes, you're on the right path. Keep doing it. Ah, so watching the signs and saying, that sounds like you're saying watching the signs. And, you know, I'm curious how it, it so you said it came to you because you worked for someone else, but are your telegrams different from that place that you worked? Did they well, evolve? What I had seen before I started my business was people just doing a little canned routine and um, they did it the same way everywhere they went. And one time I was at an event and someone who came in and did the exact same telegram the exact same way for the same people, but they were sent by two other people. And I thought, well, that is a shame and totally unnecessary. If, if I was doing this, I would do one thing one way for the first part, and I'd do it a completely different way for the second part. And so that's what made me de decide that I wanted to customize what I was doing. So people tell me stories. They tell me memories. They tell me the taste in music that someone has. And then I listen, and Spirit just says, Use this song. Mm -hmm. One time I was singing happy birthday to a man, and his wife said he loves jazz, he plays the saxophone, and um, he's going to go big, big places in this world. And he was involved in politics, local politics. So I heard a song that I used to hear Joni Mitchell sing, and I used that for him. And while I was singing to him, I noticed that his jaw was dropping and his eyes were kind of bugged out. And I thought, uh-oh, what's wrong? And so when I finished, he said, do you know what you just did, young lady? And I said, no. And he said, that's the solo I always play on my saxophone. Wow. And it was so exciting. It was a beautiful, beautiful moment. And just a reminder to listen to that inner voice and and follow the directives of spirit. It just dropped into you. That information just came and you took it. Yeah, that happens mostly every day. Yeah, that's a beautiful way, I think, for all of us to live. Um, I think that that's kind of the secret is that if we can live from that place of listening and find the joy in what we're doing, there's nothing better. Really? Yeah. And when you're singing someone's praises and you're just speaking to their heart and their soul 
and letting them know that they're appreciated, they're seen, they're understood, they're loved. It's a wonderful job. Yeah. One thing that happens sometimes is I'll get a call from a, a couple that's in crisis, and um, the guy will want to uh, reconcile the, the romance. And um, one time I got a call from a guy, and he wanted to send everything, balloons, flowers, songs, everything he could imagine, and win her heart back. So it turns out that the woman he wanted to surprise was the stepdaughter of my first husband, and that he did win her heart back, and they are still married. Wow. Wow. Small world. Six degrees of separation. I bet when they wrote that movie with that title, they had no idea the ripples it would have. I mean, and we all know what six degrees is now, don't we? It is an amazing thing that happens so often. Wow. So, um, I don't know, is there any other telegram that comes to mind? I, we, <clears throat> we've got time for another story. What's something that is memorable to you or that you want to share? A lot of times I meet people who are very, very creative about the way they romance each other. And one woman called and she sent her, I think it was her fiancé, on a treasure hunt. Go to this coffee shop, walk up to this person, they will hand you something and it will give you the next clue of where to go. Wow. And she created a beautiful, elaborate plan to get him to finally find her in a sexy lingerie in a hotel room. That was the last stop. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. So I was one of the stops on his treasure hunt. Wow. He went somewhere and found a teddy bear. He went somewhere and found this and that and flowers. And then he ended up finding her. I thought that was beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah, there, there's just been... I. I there's too many spiritual lessons to, like I could just go on and on about the gifts that I've had singing for people. Um, I met um, a young man who um, had been in a fatal accident who um, was, you know, I think he was quadriplegic, but he was very conscious. And um, as I was singing to him, he was so present with me. He was right there with me. He was full of joy. And I remember walking away from that. And I think I'd had a particularly stressful week. And I remember walking away from that and thinking, he has surrendered to where he is. He has, he's coming through. And, and I spoke to the family and said, he's amazing. And she said, he really is. He really has just said, this is my life. This is where I am right now. Um, and I just left there feeling like he had taught me to be grateful in a much deeper way. You know, the gratefulness just comes for me all the time about all the things we take for granted. And I don't know who he was before, but I know he was a very grateful young man. And um, he just he just seemed to capture every moment and wanted to keep spreading joy. And his mom said he was like that before, and he had just taken it in a graceful way. And I thought, wow, I, I don't know if I would have, you know? That, that really touched my heart, so. It was truly making the best of a difficult situation. Yeah, yeah, and seeing the gifts in it, which, boy, I'll tell you, that's something that we all need to do these days is just, you know, find the gifts in the moment, find the joy in the moment, uh, it's there's always going to be something that's going to be upsetting. There's always going to be something that we can find joy for. And I think we need to focus on doing what we need to do to make the world a, a great place, a better place for ourselves and for others. But without joy and laughter, I don't know. It is so much fun to make people laugh. <laughs> yeah. And were you ever shy? Were you ever... Um, you know, was it ever hard to embarrass people or is that something you came to naturally? 
Well, <clears throat> I have sort of two elements. And when I was a, a very young girl, I was quite shy. But then I fell in love with theater and performing, and it was just a wonderful, I don't know, like a chicken coming out of an egg. And um, You found your niche. <laughs> <laughs> you found your path. I did. But you're not actually an outgoing person anyways, are you? Sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm a quiet introspective person oh so you're both okay mm -hmm. okay yes it's no problem for me to ride through the city dressed as a chicken <laughs> not a problem <laughs> i have to say that that for me that was a lesson to realize that i, I could do a telegram now i haven't done them for you um, very often anymore but um, i love it when i get a chance to and i have um you, I remember being in a chicken suit in like August and being so hot and it was some new hip place and everybody was staring at me and I was thinking, okie dokie, um, just don't worry about it. And I thought, this is just a lesson. It's not about you, Cynthia Rose. It's not about you. And uh, then we had to go and we had to pick a couple of things up. I think we might have picked up something for you. And everywhere I went, you know, that self-consciousness, that little bit of self-consciousness I hadn't ever thought of myself as being self-conscious because I was very shy, but I grew out of it. But boy, if you put a chicken suit on and you're walking through your daily life, you'll find out if you've got any self-consciousness left, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so it, it was that was another lesson for me is that it's all about service, so it doesn't matter how ridiculous I look. And um, I'm grateful for that too. Um, so I keep most self-conscious oh. oh we are going to a break so we've got the last half we'll be back in a few minutes with randy sue sunshine and her singing telegram stories free your mind with ohm times radio iom fm Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive mind, body, spirit for the real world. With me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more. All to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. The average time a resume spends on an HR manager's desk is seven seconds, and most of them are tossed aside. Now imagine if one of those resumes belonged to Yasmin, who was... Living in a shelter, juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. We rely so much on a resume, yet it could never tell the full story of someone who... Had to be independent and take initiative, and that's how I handle every project I get. Discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org. Brought to you by Grads of Life and the Ad Council. Okay, we're back with Randy Sue Sunshine of Sunshine Singing Telegrams, and I know she's got another story for us. Uh, what's something else you want to share with us about this beautiful path you've been on? There was a day where somebody wanted Elvis to come to a party, and this was a day I was really having troubles manifesting a guy to do this job. So I ended up having to put on the Elva suit myself. <laughs> Talk about self-conscious. That was really hard for me. I was just sweating it. 
So I get to the party. I am so scared that they're going to throw tomatoes at me and say, we ordered Elvis. What the heck are you doing here? <laughs> but they bring me up to the lady who's having the birthday. And you know what she did? What? She said, oh, my God, it's you. And she said I had come to sing in her office a week before and that she had wished that someday I would come and sing to her. Aww. So it was all in divine order. And it was kind of showing you how someone else manifested you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another thing I learned doing telegrams is to remember that things are in divine order. They will happen if they're supposed to happen. They will not happen if they're not supposed to happen. I remember being in traffic one day, really, really sweating it, trying to get to this place. I got there, and I discovered that the person of honor was not there yet. And I went, oh, that's why all these hurdles were placed in front of me. And I, I was supposed to get there a little bit later. But they hid me in another room, and then she came home, and we surprised her, and it worked out. But it was a good lesson, great lesson. Um, there was another occasion where I was really trying hard to find a guy who would be a really grody looking mountain man. They, that's what they wanted. A guy with a pot belly, with um, <laughs> thinning hair, who would come into a party and burp and belch and eat the food and have the food coming out of his mouth. And I couldn't find that. <laughs> so I dressed up like a mountain woman. I was almost to the party, and I drove past a man, and he was perfect. <laughs> I jumped out of the car a block away from the party, and I said, how much would you charge me to come with me, surprise this person, I'll sing, you go in, belch and burp and <laughs> eat the food. <laughs> And he said, oh, I'll just charge you a can of beer. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and he was perfect. He did the job perfectly, and it all worked out. Oh, that is a great story. Wow. Wow. You know, you're just you're reminding me when you talk about what's meant to be. This is on the metaphysical side, but I just remembered it. You were being sent to do a telegram, um, and they expected you. Okay, they'd had you before. And uh, I had spent about five days in deep meditation, feeling the presence of an angelic being with me. And I was grateful. And it was like feeling all this energy flowing through my body. But, you know, I'm an evidential medium, so I love evidence. And I said, you know, I would love it if you would just, I know you're here with me, but I would love some acknowledgement that you're here with me. And, um, I don't know how that would happen. Everybody's saying white feathers, and that just wasn't happening for me. <laughs> so anyways, you asked me to do a telegram. There was something that had come up, and so she said, they're expecting you. And the first thing I got there, I got, oh, where's Randy? And I, uh-oh. Um, anyways, I did the telegram, and uh, the lady asked me to sit down after, which is a little unusual. You don't usually hang out in their houses after. And uh, she showed me to a special room. And then she told me that she had a message for me and basically confirmed that there was this being with me. And um, she didn't know what she was confirming, but she was a little confused and said, I don't have much information. But she said two lines and it was all I needed. And I walked out of there going, wow, thank you. I don't know if I ever told you that story, but... Um, was it in Evergreen? <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> but it was amazing. It was amazing. So it was just a... Um, and I don't... I didn't... After that, I stopped asking. But it, I had had so many things happening to me, so many signs. I was trusting them, but I thought... I would really love to let my trust go deeper, and I would love a sign. But, you know, you can't demand a sign, right? You've got to just say if you want to give me a sign. And apparently it was okay then. I think there's times when we need to trust and we're not going to, we're That's not, why I said faith. yeah, we're not going to always get a sign. So 
Uh, so I think that was for me was like, it's okay. And then, then after that, it was like, okay, I won't keep asking because if you're reaching outside for a sign all the time, then it sort of defeats trusting our inner self and our inner awareness and what's going on with us and building our intuition. If we always need to have an outward validation, then we're not listening inside, right? Exactly. Yeah. So anyways, I just... I could sit and listen to your stories all day. Do you have another one for us? <laughs> another 500 probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what, what's another one you want to share with us? I, I think a fun one was that there was a man who really wanted to go to a concert out of town. And his girlfriend kept saying, <clears throat> I don't think we can do it. I I think we got to just budget um, funds or two. You know, we, I don't think we can do it. Either. And so she, she talked him into the fact that he wasn't going. And then I got to go and announced to him that she had purchased tickets for the show he wanted to see and airline tickets, and they were going. And she was whisking them off that night oh those are really fun wow and gender reveal that's a fun one too i i once uh sang to a couple and they were having those parties where you tell what what if it's a boy or a girl oh for for having a baby when you said gender reveal I thought something <laughs> totally different okay <laughs> I thought, honey, I'm having a sex change. Here's a telegram. Okay. I'm sure that'll come along. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I I got to sing in little curly curly cues, revealing one cue at a time, one little clue, one little clue, and then finally, finally, at the end, said, "You're having a girl." <laughs> That was very much fun. And back to our conversation <clears throat> about sometimes we think that we're there to surprise someone else or to help someone else, but really the surprise is on us. Uh, I like my getting that validation. Yeah, out. it was so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I felt that presence with me when I was doing readings and saying, yes, you know, here I'm with you. Um, and I, and I know why that was there is that it, I still wasn't okay with people crying. You know, I was so empathic that when people were going through their healing, I wanted to console them, but you have to stay connected. So that was, that was a, a gift for me to, to trust. And I just felt like I would, was being whisked away and lifted up with the spirit world. And I would be thankful they were there. So that was, that was a, a beautiful gift. Um, in my business, if the recipient is crying, that's like receiving an Academy Award <laughs> to get those Miss America happy tears of, oh, my goodness, I really feel this in my heart. I really appreciate this moment. I'm really touched. That's a wonderful thing. And it is hard to not start blubbering and crying with them. Yeah, I mean, you really got to let them have their moments and or the ones that look like they're absolutely embarrassed and hating it. And then they reach out and give you a big hug because they're so happy. Oh, that has happened. <clears throat> One time I went to sing to a girl. She was turning 13. The whole time I sang to her, she was under the table screaming and saying, no, stop, go away. I I left there just completely devastated. I tried to do my very best job. I told the customer, I don't think it worked out very well. I think she hated it. But I did my very best. So years pass, and I need a babysitter one day. And I'm in the neighborhood she lives in. And somebody says, why don't you see if she'll babysit for you? I went to knock on the door, and she said, oh, it's you. Oh. Oh, 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 you're the lady who sang the telegram to me. I really nearly fainted. She ran into her bedroom, brought out the telegram. She had memorized the whole thing, sang it to me, told me she had become an attorney, 
decided she would rather do improv and her favorite thing to do in her improv troupe was to pretend she was a singing telegram and do an impersonation of me. Oh, see, you know, that just, to me, that's like a lesson in we never know just how much we affect people. But if we come from that place of love and pure place, then you, you're giving a gift and you really just, the gifts are not meant to be checked on or held, right? You just give it. Correct. Another lady, a singer came back and said, I tried my best. I don't think they liked it. They, when I went in, they were watching TV and they just didn't respond to anything. And finally, I asked permission to turn the TV down. But still, they just sat there like stuffed animals. I really tried my best. I'm so sorry. Next morning, I get a phone call from the lady who was sung to, and she said, Hey, uh, your mom is a so-and-so, and they sang to me yesterday, and I want to know if you'll send me another copy of the song. I'm going to have it decoupaged and put it on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So she, was, she was embarrassed or shy in the moment, but she really loved and appreciated her gift. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? We just, we have to remember that we have to go through life and shine our light, do what we do with love, but don't judge it as we're doing it by other people's reactions. Don't take it personally. Wonderful lesson. I went through a whole year where I decided to take nothing personally. I learned so much by doing that. That's a great I, I think singing telegrams is a big lesson in not taking anything personally <laughs> because you learn that like people react um, when they're embarrassed, they're happy and they seem like they don't want it, but they don't want you to stop it. They don't want to say it. Right. <laughs> right. Or some of the, um, you know, risque telegrams. Is there a risque story you have? We have, we have just a, few minutes left if you have a risque story <laughs> <laughs> well this was a very amazing telegram this girl was surprising her uncle and um, she told me to do a couple of different things she wanted me to dress as um, Dolly Parton and um, she wanted me to to order him to get down on his all fours and give me a ride. So I am not the smallest woman in the world, <laughs> but I went ahead and followed her directions. And all I did is just stand over him and I thought I would pretend I was being, you know, having him give me a ride. But what really happened is he did. <laughs> he started bucking. <laughs> Oh, my God, it was mortifying in the moment. Anyway, then she said, now, before you go, go up to him and reach in his waistband. I put something there for you. And you know what she put? What did she put there? <coughs> Pardon me. A $100 bill. Wow. That was. <laughs> wow, that's. That's a story. Yeah, that's another one of those. You've got to figure it out in the moment, isn't it? Well, I have to say, um, there's, I know we could probably talk for, for hours on the other stories here, but there is nobody in the country like you that does telegrams. I know that. I know that. I've heard from people, I don't know how these things have come to me in my travels, but, you know, okay, you can... You can get three songs uh, done in this style or we'll sing these songs, but you you learn new material if you have to, right? Yes, all yeah. the time. Yeah, you learn new material. You pull from old material. There's such a wide range. Uh, there's no set costume for something. I mean, sure, if somebody, you could have a gorilla costume that might be like a gorilla, but if your intuition calls to add something to it, you do, right? That's right. Yeah, and I think that's, Wow, that's just, I imagine that you go out and you sing to one person, but I wonder how many people in a day see that 
telegram outfit too and probably smile because I, I know some people that say they drive by where your business is and they it just makes them smile every time they're by your business they just think oh what a fun life she must be having and it makes them laugh so whatever so just the fact that you exist that you're doing it I know makes someone's day I personally know that because when they realized that I knew you they said oh that lady yeah Yuki, you're you're um, you're known in uh, in Colorado here because you've gone all over Colorado, yes? What's the farthest yes. you've driven? Telluride, um, all over. Glenwood, I um, think I did something in New Mexico once. Wow, all the way to New Mexico. I did something in Omaha once. In Omaha, wow. In Colorado. Wow, we should just get you like one of those big buses so you could just like travel, you know, and go do them everywhere coming to a city near you but unfortunately we have her only in Colorado well um, if you want to get in contact with Randy she's at sunshine singing telegrams she's on Facebook and uh, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show Randy thank you so much for sharing some of your stories it's a real honor to be here yeah and we'll be back next week with uh, psychic medium Kim Moore talking about her new book and uh, the life of being a medium and we'll be open for uh, calls in if you want to call in so thank you so much for sharing this hour on ohm times radio hope to see you next week uh, there's a facebook page as well cynthia rose medium group if you'd like to um, we'll see you soon